A4. A4 is the calorimetry problem. So one thing I realized is I messed up on uh, the thing, right? So this shouldn't be delta H. This should be delta E um, of the reaction. That's my bad um, for not paying attention um, and just simply copying and pasting because I don't feel like finding the delta symbol. Um, so that may have been what was tripping up people, but we'll go through the problem um, and solve everything. So in this case right here, right, the you know, the question is calculate the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter of combustion of 0.1584 grams of C7H6O2 increases the temperature of the bomb calorimeter by 2.54 degrees Celsius. So the important thing to know in this specific case right here, right, is that we know that delta E is equal to Q plus W, right? In a bomb calorimeter, work is equal to zero, um, right? And so then that means that in a bomb calorimeter, delta E is equal to the amount of heat that gets released um, by the reaction um in this case right here so um that's why i you know the delta h was a mistake on my part right that should be equal to delta e in this scenario um and that's why right you use a bomb calorimeter right bomb calorimeter gives you the delta e of a reaction or a process whereas the coffee cup calorimeter right gives you the delta h um of that process right because in both of those scenarios right delta h is equal to uh the heat at constant pressure, whereas in the case of a bomb calorimeter, right, you're at constant volume. And so delta E in that case, right, is equal to the heat at constant volume in those scenarios. Um, so all we have to do, right, is calculate uh, the amount of heat, right, that is being released um, because, you know, we, we know then that the Q of the reaction, right, is going to be equal to negative Q of the calorimeter in that scenario. And we also know, right, that the Q of the calorimeter is going to be equal to, um, you know, the uh, heat capacity times the temperature change in this case, right? And so we know that the temperature change of the, the uh, calorimeter is 2.54 degrees Celsius. Um, and so now all we have to do is, you know, figure out what the Q of the reaction is, multiply that by negative one, right? We get the Q of the calorimeter, and then we divide the Q of the calorimeter by the change in temperature, and then that gives us the heat capacity of the of the, the bomb calorimeter, right? The C right here. So if we just take this, rearrange it, right? C is equal to Q of the calorimeter divided by delta T. So Q of the reaction, right? In this case right here, right? That's just simply going to be the number of moles times the delta E of the reaction, um, right? In, in these scenarios right here. And so looking at this equation, we know that for every two moles of C7H6O2, right, delta E is going to, you know, the, the change in delta E is equal to negative 6,452 kilojoules in that case. But we're only using 0.1584 grams of that material in the bomb calorimeter. So what we have to do is we have to figure out first how many moles of that material are we actually using. And then we can use that information, right, to calculate what the, the delta E of the, the reaction is, um, you know, in that scenario, right? So this is the delta E of the reaction per C7H6O2, right? So the number of moles in this case, right, is going to be equal to um, the, the the mass divided by the molecular weight of the a substance, right? So the molecular weight is equal to, so if I calculate all this out, so we have 12.01 times 7 plus 6 times 1.01 .01 plus 2 times 16. We get 122.13 grams per mole of C7H6O2, right? That's the molecular weight there. And so we take that here. So we have 0 0.1584 grams. Divide that by 122.13 grams per mole. Right, what we get then in this scenario is 0.1584 divided by 122.13 comes out to being 0 0.001297297 moles, right? Because the grams cancel and the mole gets brought up. So that's how many moles of material we're using in this case. The next thing, right, is that um, we just need to figure out what the standardized value is, right? So we know that the delta E of the reaction is going to be equal to, um, or sorry, the delta E of the reaction per C7H6O2 is going to be equal to the delta E of the reaction divided by, right, 
the number we have right there, right? Divided by two. So if we take negative 6,452 kilojoules, right? We divide that by um, uh, two moles of C7H6O2. What we get is negative 6,452 divided by two comes out to being negative 3,226 kilojoules per mole of C7H6O2, right? So we have those values. So now we can get the Q of the reaction in this case. So we just plug in our values that we have here, right? So Q of the reaction is equal to, uh, where is it? 0 0.001297 moles of C7H6O2 times negative 3,226 kilojoules per mole of C7H6O2, right? So the moles cancel, we only end up with kilojoules, so Q of the reaction is equal to 0 0.001297 times negative 3226. That comes out to being equal to negative 4.184 kilojoules. So that's the Q of the reaction. So Q of the calorimeter then, right, is going to be equal to negative of that. So that's equal to negative Q cal. So then Q of the calorimeter is equal to 4.184 kilojoules. So we have that value. And so now all we need to do, right, is plug that into here, right? So we have C is equal to Q cal over the change in temperature. So we take that and so we have now 4.184 kilojoules divided by the change in temperature is 2.54 degrees Celsius. So the heat capacity of that bomb calorimeter is 4.184 divided by 2.54 comes out to being 1.647 kilojoules per degree Celsius, right? So that's the heat capacity in that case. And so that should match what I have on the key. Yes, um, right, so we have that right there. So then um, the next part of the question is, right, so if you use that same bomb calorimeter that we've now standardized and we use that to uh, combust 0 0.2130 grams of vanillin, <clears throat> um, right? And then the temperature now changes by 3.25 degrees Celsius, right? It wants us to determine the delta E of the, the reaction per mole of vanillin. So now there's two things to do for this reaction, um, right? Is first off, we're going to need to calculate what um, the, uh, uh, the Q of the calorimeter is going to be equal to, right? Because we know what the temperature change is. We know what the, the heat capacity is, right? So that'll give us the Q of the calorimeter. That will then, you know, in turn, give us the Q of the reaction. So once we know the Q of the reaction, all we have to do then is just divide that value by the number of moles of vanillin used, and we will then get what the delta E of the reaction is per mole of vanillin, right? So, so there's, you know, two steps uh, 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 to this process. Actually, well, three, um, right? So the first step, um, right, that we would want to do is first calculate what the Q of the reaction is. So we know that the Q of the reaction, or sorry, the Q of the calorimeter, excuse me, is equal to C delta T, right? We already calculated what the C is. So that's, so that's equal to 1.647 kilojoules per degree Celsius. We know that delta T then is positive 3.25 degrees Celsius. So 3.25 degrees Celsius, right? So degrees Celsius cancels. So what we get is that Q cal is equal to 1.647 times 3.25, which comes out to being 5.35 kilojoules. So that's the Q of the calorimeter. We know, right, that the relationship is then that that's gonna be equal to the negative of the Q of the reaction. So the negative Q of the reaction, right, is going to be equal to negative 5.35 kilojoules. Um, and so then the next thing is, right, so we know what the Q of the reaction is. We need to calculate now how many moles of vanillin we used. So to do that, right, we have the molecular weight of vanillin. We can calculate that. So that's just simply going to be 
uh, right, 12.01 times 8 plus 8 times 1.01 .01 plus 3 times 16 gives us 152.16 grams per mole, right? And so then that means that, you know, N is equal to, to mass over molecular weight. So we have 0 0.2130 grams divided by 1.5 or 152.16 grams per mole, right? Grams cancel, moles goes up top. What we get is 0 0.2130 divided by 152.16 comes out to being 0 0.0013, uh, 140. Right, there's a whole bunch of nines and eights and stuff at the end. Um, moles. Right, so we have that right there. So we know, right, Q of the reaction is equal to N times delta E of the reaction, right, per vanillin. So if we rearrange that, right, what we get is then that delta E of the reaction per vanillin is equal to Q of the reaction divided by N, right? So we know the Q of the reaction, right? That's negative of the Q calorimeter. So that should be negative 5.35 kilojoules divided by the number of moles. So that case where right, we already calculated that says so 0 0.00140 moles. So that will be equal to negative 5.35 divided by 0 0.00140 comes out to being negative 3,821 kilojoules per mole, which is basically what I got on the key, right? I got it on the key negative 3,824 kilojoules, um, right? But that's, but that, so that's what you get, right? In this specific scenario right here, um, right? And so that's what it is per mole of vanillin. And that's how you apply, right? That's how you approach this, right? So again, you know, the general process is making sure you know how many moles of substance that you're actually, you know, doing the calorimetry with. Um, it's, you know, understanding what the relationship is between the calorimeter and the reaction, um, right. And applying all of those different, uh, um, approaches and, and things.